We've seen that functional dependencies play a central role in the theory of relational databases. Multivalue dependencies are a generalization of functional dependencies. Recall the table decomposition theorem. The split, so the decomposition of a relation is lossless if the set of shared attributes of the new tables is a key of at least one of the new tables. This theorem gives us a sufficient condition for a lossless split. However, this condition is not necessary in the sense that the decomposition might be lossless even if the condition is not satisfied. So the question is, what is a sufficient and necessary condition for a lossless split? And in order to get the sufficient and necessary condition, we need to look at what is called multivalued dependencies. There are a generalization of functional dependencies and multivalued dependencies lead to a sufficient and necessary condition for lossless decomposition. And we will also see that multivalued dependencies are used to define what's called the force normal form. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have a table that stores information about the knowledge of employees. So we have the employee and we store what programming languages the employee knows and we store what database management systems the employee is acquainted with. Now, in this table, we do not have any non-trivial functional dependencies. The employee name does not uniquely determine the programming language. It also does not uniquely determine the database management system. The programming language does not determine the employee name and also the database management system does not uniquely determine the employee name. It does in this particular database state, but not in general. So we don't have any non-trivial functional dependencies. Therefore, this table is in voice code normal form. Nevertheless, this table contains a lot of redundant information. We store twice that the employee John Smith knows the programming language C. We store twice that the employee John Smith knows C++. We store twice that Maria Brown knows PostgreSQL. So this table contains a lot of redundant information and it must be split. So we must split the table into two tables, one with the knowledge of programming languages and one with the knowledge of the database management systems. However, observe that this split is only lossless if the programming language and the database management system are independent of each other. So whether this split is lossless really depends on the semantics of this table. If the semantics of the original table is that we store for every employee whether the employee knows the interface of the database management system in a particular programming language, then these columns, database management system and programming languages, are correlated, and then we cannot split the tables. So the split is only lossless if these two columns are really independent of each other. This leads to the concept of multivalued dependencies. And we denote multivalued dependencies using a double arrow to differentiate them from functional dependencies, which are denoted using a single arrow. So here we have a multivalued dependency from employee to programming language. And you can think of this as the employee uniquely determines a set of programming languages. And the set of programming languages is independent of all the other columns. So for John Smith, the set of programming languages is C and C++. And this set is independent of 
the database management system. So if you're looking at Oracle, we see C and C++, but also if you're looking at MySQL, we are seeing C and C++. So no matter what database management system we look at for John Smith, we see the same set of programming languages. So you can think of this as an embedded function from an employee name to a set of programming languages. Formally, we have a multi-value dependency. A uniquely determines a set of values B, if and only if the following holds, namely, whenever we consider two tuples of the relation that have the same value for A, then we can exchange their values for B and the resulting tuples are again in the relation. These are two tuples from our relation. They have the same value for A, namely the employee, John Smith. So we can exchange their programming language values, C, C++, this will give this. And the resulting tuples are still in the relation. So John Smith C++ Oracle is in the relation. Let's have a look. John Smith C++ Oracle is in the relation. Also John Smith C MySQL. John Smith C MySQL is in the relation. So indeed, we can exchange these values. So these values are independent of the database management system and we still have rows in the relation. So exchanging the values for B expresses that the values for B are independent of all of the other attributes, in this case independent of the database management system. In general, a multi-value dependency takes the following shape. We can also have a set of attributes on the left, a set of attributes on the right. So we have attributes a1 up to an on the left and attributes b1 up to bm on the right. And let's say that the relation has also some other attributes c1 up to ck. So such a multi-value dependency holds in the database state i if and only if for all tuples tu in i of r, so in the relation that is associated by the database state i to the table with name r. So t and u are now tuples of our relation r. t and u agree for all of the attributes a, so they have the same value for a1, the same value for a2, and so on. So this is indicated here, we write a1, a2 up to an, so this is the same values. Um, they can have, T and U can of course have different values for B, so that's why we write B1 up to BM for T, and for U we write B1 prime up to BM prime. And they can have different values for the other attributes that do not appear in this multi-value dependency. So let's say that in T the values are C1 up to CK, and in U they are C1 prime up to CK prime. So whenever we have two tuples that agree on the values for the attributes A, then we can exchange the values for the attributes B. So we exchange B1 with B1 prime, B2 with B2 prime, and so on. So this gives us these two tuples, T prime and U prime. They have the same values for A, but now the values for B are exchanged, and the values for C are the same as T and U have respectively. So T prime and U prime are basically the same as T and U, but the values for B have been exchanged. And this is exactly what's expressed here, that there should be tuples T prime and U prime in the relation, such that T prime agrees with T, except that the values for B have been exchanged. So the B values of T prime are those B values of U and not of T. And u prime agrees with u, except that the b values have been exchanged, so that the b values of u prime are those values from t and not from u. So this is exactly what's denoted here. t prime and u prime 
the B values have been exchanged with respect to T and U. So for any such tuple TU, we want that the tuple T prime U prime, where the B values are exchanged, are again in the relation. And if this holds for all tuples TU that agree on their A values, then this multivalue dependency is satisfied in this database state. A multivalue dependency always comes in pairs. So if you have a multivalue dependency from employee to set of programming languages, then we automatically also have a multivalue dependency from employee to set of database management systems to all other columns in the table. So in general, we have the following. If R is a relation with attributes A1 up to N, B1 up to BM, and C1 up to CK, then the following multivalue dependencies are equivalent, saying that we have a multivalue dependency from A1 up to N to B1 up to BM, is equivalent to saying that we have a multivalue dependency from A1 up to N to C1 up to CK. So that A1 up to N uniquely determine the set of the B values, is the same as saying that a1 up to n uniquely determine the set of c values. And we can understand this if we look at the last slide with the formal definition of the multivalued dependencies. Namely, here we have obtained t prime and u prime by swapping the b values. However, we get basically the same if we instead of swapping the b values, swap the c values because the A values are anyway the same. Swapping the B values just means that we have, in one of the tuples here, we have the B prime values and the C non prime values. In the other tuple, we have the B values and the C prime values. And we get the same if we would have swapped the C values. We would also have a combination of B values then with C prime values and B prime with C non prime values. So whether we swap B or we swap C gives rise to the same tuples and both tuples again must be in relation, which means the same. Multivalue dependencies are a generalization of functional dependencies. If we have a functional dependency, A1 up to AN uniquely determines B1 up to BM, then the corresponding multivalue dependency automatically holds. The reason is quite simple, because if we consider two rows with the same values for the A attributes, then if the functional dependency holds, then these A attributes uniquely determine the values for the B attributes. So if you have two rows with the same values for the A attributes, they must also have the same values for the B attributes, so swapping the values for the B attributes has no effect at all. We get the same tuples, so we still have tuples in the relation. We can reason about multivalue dependencies like we did for function dependencies. For the function dependencies, we have seen that we can determine whether function dependencies are implied using the Armstrong axioms. And for multivalue dependencies, there is a generalization of the Armstrong axioms. We will not look at them in detail in this course. A relation is in force normal form if every multivalue dependency is either trivial, so the right hand side is a subset of the left hand side, or it's implied by a key of the relation. The force normal form is in its definition very similar to the Boyce-Cott normal form. The only difference is that functional dependencies are exchanged by multivalued dependencies. And since every functional dependency is also a multivalued dependency, it means that the force normal form is stronger than the Boyce-Cott normal form. So if a relation is in force normal form, 
then it's automatically in voice code number four. In practice, however, it's not very common that the fourth normal form is violated while the boy's code normal form is not. The table that we've seen before with the employees, the knowledge of the programming language and the knowledge of the database management systems is an example of a relation that is in voice code normal form because there are no non-trivial functional dependencies, but it is not in force normal form. To briefly summarize the goals of database normalization, we want to avoid redundant storage of information. We want to store facts about different concepts in different tables. So we want to store separate facts in separate tables. We want to transform integrity constraints into constraints that can be enforced by the database management system. So we want to transform function dependencies and multi-value dependencies into key constraints.